Hello and welcome. Happy Friday, everybody. Yes, and today we are going to be making this cherry blossom watercolor art together. And I'm very excited. I've been loving doing this series with you guys. And I have Leah or mom here to um, assist with questions today. Yeah, I have my laptop here. Actually, we, we kind of rotated roles and I figured I, I'm going to do this on camera. Anna is over here on second camera today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, thank you, Anna. Thank you. And of course, Matthew. But I just wanted to shout out that if you have any questions and you're on YouTube, just quickly pop over to our site at leahgriffith.com because uh, you can see the whole video there as well, and you can ask your questions. I'm only reading questions on our site, not on YouTube. So either way, you can also put questions in the comments on YouTube, and I'll come back later, or Emily will come back later and answer them. But go ahead and um, type those questions in, and I'll make sure that they get asked. Yay. So, yeah. Right. Well, in the meantime, why don't we get started on this project? Let's go over what we're going to be using today. So I already have my template printed out and if you're using an SVG I would recommend printing out the PDF for reference as well so we have the let me show you up here the um, final version of what our assembled piece will look like that we're going to look at as we put it together and then this is the one with all of the pieces and if you're doing this with a Cricut all you need to do is just have this kind of on hand we have Kelly here so she'll be using the silhouette great or a cutting machine I should have said <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you're doing this by hand I would recommend printing this directly onto your watercolor paper and using it um, mm -hmm. from there so uh, we have this as our reference and then I've got our watercolor paper. This one is my current favorite. This is from our art paper kit and this is the cloud texture and I mm -hmm. adore it. It is so beautiful. It's been really lovely to work on. I've got our watercolor set up here. You can use whatever watercolors you have on hand. We're going to be using mostly these pretty pinks and browns today. There's no green in this one, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. I've got the Barely Art Glue and this is the first time that I've done one of these art projects, one of this watercolor series with only the Barely glue and I found it worked wonderfully. You can use a tacky glue or a stick glue. I used the Yes Paste before. We just wanna use something that's got a low water quant content. And this I found worked really well as long as we're using it in just, you know, small amounts. Mm -hmm. I've got a nice thick brush here. I'm just using one um, because we're kind of blending all our colors today and our needle nose tweezers. We've got some very tiny little details we'll be adding, so we need those as well as these foam square risers to add some density and depth to our piece. I've got a little cup of water sitting as well, and then this little cuppy just has some glue in it already uh, to make it easy to apply. And your paper towels. Oh, and paper towels. <laughs> Always need paper towels when we're using watercolor. Yes. All right, so. And one of the things I wanted to mention mm -hmm. is we did actually do a demo of the same project mm -hmm. for one of our summits and it was so popular, people loved it. So when Emily made this version, and I can show you the final. Oh yeah, we have all four. Yeah, We've done, this is the fourth in the series, so. So when Emily made this version and it's super kind of I, I, monochromatic almost, it mm -hmm. has just, which this is probably my favorite color. Mm -hmm. um, I thought this would just be a, such a fun one to show off makes a great gift for anyone. And also, isn't it like Lunar New Year tomorrow, which is perfect for the cherry blossom? Yes, <laughs> it's very easy. And yeah. oh, I realized just now that I forgot colored pencils. Um, I'll but go get them for you. you don't need colored mm -hmm. pencils. We uh, have had some people do this project without them mm -hmm. and you don't need them. I think it's just nice to add a little bit of extra detail to whatever we're doing. And this one, I, I really did not use that many. So you could even do it with a thinner watercolor brush if you'd like. Yeah. And you can um, find all the color pencils that you did use on the project. <laughs> well, yeah, I kind mm -hmm. of just said I used a uh, light orange. Perfect. There we <laughs> I go. feel like a lot of people have colored pencils um, at yeah. their home. So yes, we did. We did one of these live and they were so fun. Um, but yeah, you ready to get started Let's on this? Let's go. Let's okay. do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set one of these aside because we are going to be using one of these sheets as our backer. So this we're gonna keep dry, set aside, and then we've got the one that we're going to be using for our pretty flowers. And if you're using a cutting machine, go ahead and download the file and then set it to attach so everything stays in this exact place when you're cutting it. Mm -hmm. 
And then we're going to use this reference of color as we paint. So we've got the stick here down at the bottom, we've got the centers here kind of in the middle, and the little pieces in between, we're going to, so we're gonna gradiate from a brown red up into our pinks. So we'll start over here, and with watercolor, I always suggest doing a quick wash of just water all over your paper. We only need to go about that far down. And I feel like if you have never painted with watercolor before or you're nervous about it, this is such a perfect project mm -hmm. because you really can't go wrong. You can't. I mean, unless you were to go super dark um, with this particular project, that might not look quite correct, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're keeping it kind of pastel -y this mm -hmm. time. And I do know that um, Anna's son, who is, how old is he now? 10? He's 12. 12? He, he made one of these projects for Christmas mm -hmm. for his grandmother. So mm -hmm. cute. Um, yes, so for if you're using this color palette, I ended up using this kind of red brown and this brown here a lot. I love these two combinations. And I'm just gonna start down here. And something I've noticed about this particular palette is that it does lift up pretty easily. So you notice that it dropped down pretty heavy and it kind of fades out nicely. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna continue kind of keeping this in mind. And then I'm gonna slowly shift over into these pinks. <laughs> you can hear my dog snoring. He's right under Matthew's table. We have two dogs as a studio audience today. <laughs> and we will want to take this pretty close to the edge because Cricut does cut to the edge and especially with this branch, that um, the long branch, it does oops, go all the way almost all the way to the edge. So we're gonna paint close to the edge. And this is just our first wash. So once we have this down, we can kind of go in and add a little bit more color. So I can do a little orange, a little more of this pink and just kind of blob it down. And I think these really like organic looking streaks is part of what makes this project so beautiful. It looks very organic when you cut out the pieces, you don't really know it's the, the paint doesn't exactly match with what you cut, which I think looks really nice. And I think that adding the different colors does bring out more dimension and makes it look more interesting mm -hmm. and also gives it that watercolor look. Totally. And I can tell you, you're not super worried about the hard edges of no. your watercolor brush. It doesn't Because it looks cool when yeah. you have a flower cut out mm -hmm. and it's just got a pinch of this hard edge. It looks really interesting. Yes. So I've even just like blobbed in like big, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of get crazy here. Just the only thing that I would keep in mind is the gradation of where you want these. So we want all these kind of top flowers up here to be nice and pink, maybe a little bit of orange. And then in here, we'll want it a little bit more brown and then brown here at the bottom. That's the only thing we need to keep in mind. Can I show them the one you have done already? Let's show in a sec. Okay. We're gonna finish this first. Don't wanna get in a hurry. <laughs> And you're doing another layer. Yeah, I, with mm -hmm. these watercolors, they do take a little bit of building up to get that color payoff, but we are using, we are trying to keep it pretty pastel. So you could even set this aside, let it dry. And if you wanna add more, mm -hmm. you can. So from here, if you're happy with your colors, just go ahead and set this aside and let it dry for about half an hour. It should be good to go. And if you find that your paper warps quite a lot, you can actually take an iron to it really easily and just press it out to make it nice and flat if you're running it through a Cricut or another cutting machine. <laughs> um, and a, a heat press or, or e even a one of those big presses, you could stick it in there. Totally. Also put, put some books on top of it. Yeah that would work well. I find that this paper actually doesn't warp too much. Mm -hmm. So especially, that's one of the reasons we do that color wash at the beginning mm -hmm. um, of the water. The, wa the water wash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got that ready to go. Set it aside, wait 30 minutes, and oh, ding, it happens to be done. Ding, 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 <laughs> so this ding. is the one I did this morning, and you can see my colors. Here's a rock compare. Oops. So this is the one from this morning. And um, 
I went ahead and ran this through the cutting machine and I did use, what is it, the craft board setting for this. Mm -hmm. I was finding the heavy cardstock, which is what I was using previously, kind of stopped working for this thick watercolor paper. So I used the craft board setting mm -hmm. and it worked flawlessly. It's perfect. So let's, well, let's hope. I haven't taken it off the mat yet, but it looks like it worked out really well. So I'm gonna try my best to keep a lot of these pieces, since there are so many teeny little pieces, I'm gonna try to keep them on the sticky mat so we don't lose them. I wanna say something here that Kelly just shouted out. She said, if you're a bit of a perfectionist, um, hmm, I don't know any of those, uh, Silhouette users can use the pick scan mat to place the pieces to cut exactly where they want. So I, So what I'm thinking it does is it actually scans the paper, you can see it, and then place them exactly where you want them. I know the um, Glowforge does that as well. I hear you, and I think that perfectionism is, is wonderful. <laughs> However, <laughs> in this kind of art, I think having a little yeah. bit of that free, loose uh, color placement is part of what adds to the beauty. Mm -hmm. Here, and let's switch to this top cam. You can see I have like these harder edges kind of in here, and I think it's gonna look really lovely. I might go in and darken up this branch a little bit, but mm -hmm. other than that, I think this looks perfect. Yeah, well, she she can move her pieces to that imperfection spot that mm -hmm. has all, all the it's variation. It's true, yeah. yeah. Those perfect little places. <laughs> Great. Okay. okay, so we've got this ready to go, and now I'm going to grab my piece of paper that I'm gonna use for backing. Here, let's get this watercolor out of here. And the water. Thank you. I'm, I'm just mom mopping up for you. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. We try to not do that so much anymore, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. That's all right. Um, could you actually hand me that brush again? Do you, want, do you want me to go get you some color pencil? Sure. All right, I'll do that. Um, I'm just gonna darken up this one little branch that didn't quite get enough brown. I know I'm gonna do this right on the Cricut mat. This is probably not great. I should have done it before I took the paper off, but it's fine. Just a little darker. And that's something that you can do um, as well as you can paint. At, once you have it cut, you can add whatever details you wanted if you'd prefer to do it with paint instead of colored pencils, which I think would look lovely. There we go. It's going to be these two, the ones that are sharpened. There we go. <laughs> so an orange and a pink. Yes, so these are the colored pencils that I used. Why don't you call out the colors? Uh, this one is yellow, orange, and blush pink. So it's a nice light pink and a, yeah, I guess a yellow orange. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got my template here and this has, this is gonna be what I'm gonna follow for placement. And we're going to just kind of set it right here so we can look at it and we'll be starting off with our branch. So I'm gonna carefully peel that off the mat and we can compare. I mean, that's beautiful. Right? With the variation. To get variation. that, I think it's just so lovely. Yeah. And again, this doesn't need to be perfect. I would just try to get it relatively centered. On the last one I did, it was slightly to one side. <laughs> um, all right. And then this is where, <laughs> this particular branch is where the Stick glue might be handy, but I like a challenge. So I <laughs> just use my finger <laughs> to do a really thin layer of white glue on the back. You could also use the point, but then you spread could, it out. You yeah. could, and that's what I think I did the first time, is mm -hmm. I just use the point and spread it out. But I am going to just be chaotic and use my finger. <laughs> you could also use a paintbrush if you wanted. And I'm just gonna do a little bit here on the bottom. Let's get it placed and then we'll go back in and glue the rest. That's Does a good that idea. look about right? Mm -hmm. That's why I have my paper towel. I think one of the things that I really found so, much, so charming about these pieces is even this first layer without any risers, it starts to add dimension. Mm -hmm because we're layering paper mm -hmm. and, and the texture, mm -hmm. the texture from the watercolor I think is just so gorgeous. 
and having it be kind of random almost. Is this crazy that I'm just using my finger? Nope. <laughs> it's real. Yeah, I didn't really, I was having a hard time finding another method to get a really thin layer uh, without just wasting a ton of the glue and having it kind of bubble over the sides. Right, you do want to be careful. So I found this was the way I could get really good control um, and not be wasting a lot of glue or getting glue all over the front. I did ask everybody here um, on our website. So if anyone on YouTube wants to throw in their answer, pop over and tell us here. I said, okay, I'm not done with the series yet. I know Emily <laughs> thinks she's done. I'm not done, I can do more. <laughs> so what flower or fruit or branch do you think that you'd be interested in next? Yeah. And Kelly shouted out, Ta -da, peony, of course. Oh God. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's I a think. lot of petals. <laughs> well, I think there's a way to do it. I have some thoughts, so yeah. While she's working on that, I'll show you guys. Okay, of course, here's this one. You can, you can go over to our site or even on our social media. I did a, a fun little video on that um, on our social media. Here is the first one. This is the first of the series. And I the, love this one. This is one of my favorites. Yes, I this think. is the plum. Um, I can't remember what the name of that plum. Mirabelle Mirabel. Plum. Okay, and then our the one that we did on video. So if you want to see this one on video, we do have it. And I think it's posted in right inside the post. And that one was fun, the acorns. And then here is what we did for Christmas, which was the Christmas rose or the hellebore. And mm -hmm. of course you can make, we did purple, but you could do any color you prefer. Mm -hmm. Those come in gorgeous colors. Let me so there's the four. If you don't mind, I would like to reference my. Yes. <laughs> so it, uh, I have my branch down. And what I would recommend doing at this point is going ahead and just taking all of the larger pieces off and just kind of arranging them without glue so you know where they are. And this is where our little template it comes in handy. You can match up the pieces, guess about where they go. This is gonna go there. We're gonna use risers on these ones. So I don't wanna glue them on yet. Just kinda know where things go. Yeah, so we just wanna know yeah. where things go. Mm -hmm. Scoot that over. Okay. And I like having my little reference super handy. All right, Katie says California poppy. I think that would be gorgeous. I think that would be really pretty with some. You know what I want to do? What's that? Snowdrops. Oh yeah, that would be a good winter one. Okay, I'm I'm seeing a, the next four series happening here. <laughs> we'll do flowers. Maybe it's all flowers, exactly. Except for the hellebore for me, well, I loved it. I kind of felt like it was a little out of place. Yeah, well, maybe we'll have to do a branch to replace the hellebore. Mm -hmm. Although the snowdrops would be a great winter. Here? And then this one goes right behind it. Kind of like that. And how fun, you can rotate them or mm -hmm. you know decide which way they go. Yes. And I definitely would, I'm not going to touch any of these center pieces, all these little bits in the middle until we have everything down. So mm -hmm. those that's gonna be the very last thing that we do. Um, and then I have some smaller petal pieces over here that are going to layer on top to add dimension, but we're going to wait for that too. So let's. So just the basic. This is just kind yeah. of our base bases. Okay. Let's go there. And then we've got some larger buds. Let's go ahead and figure out where those go. It's kind of like a little puzzle. And you know how we love to do puzzles. We do. <laughs> it's kind of our thing. Cute. Yes. That goes there. Yeah, if anybody has some good puzzle recommendations, we need some new ones. Mm hmm Oh, that's so cute. That one has a little stem. Yes, this one with has a stem it. and just tucks right in under that flower. And then there's this piece here that's got two sections. I guess it's easier if I hold it here. And this one is gonna go down here and kind of go on either side of the branch. And I think for now, I guess let's add a couple more of these big buds and then we'll start gluing. And really, this is just a reference. 
Mm -hmm. You can can arrange them what looks best to you. Mm -hmm. I definitely changed it. Even in this one, I Mm -hmm. I moved some stuff around a little bit, especially like the little teeny tiny pieces. I think I lost a couple, (laughs) so I kind of made it it work. I lost one this time, but it's not too bad. Move the glue, yes. Get rid of these two. Pretty, it's pretty satisfying to do this. I really enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, I'm okay making more. Let's oop, continue our series. Fly away. This goes right there. Great. All right, so we've got some smaller pieces left, but for now, let's go ahead and get everything except for these three largest flowers. So this one here, this one right here, and this one are all gonna go on risers. So we are going to remove those for now. Keep in mind where they're going to go. And then we'll glue down the rest. Okay. And this is where it's gonna be a little tedious, guys. So thanks for your patience. I'm just going to kind of dip my edges. Now I've got some on the side and it's a little easier to control how much glue gets on. We can watch glue dry, everybody. (laughs) Who doesn't love watching glue dry? Exactly. And always more ideas, everybody. And Kelly, if you have more than one idea, throw it into the comments. We love to hear. I really like doing these branches. I think they're just so interesting and Mm -mm, intricate. Did you have lunch? Your tummy's growling. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> Does it go that way? Let's see. There, that's how it goes. Okay. Might get in there with my finger again. Doop, doop. And again, we're applying a very thin layer. With the watercolor paper, it's a little easier mm-hmm. because watercolor paper is quite absorbent. You know, it's meant for water. So the water-based glue doesn't warp it quite as much as, say, cardstock would warp, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It's made for water. It is made for water. You don't have to do it exactly. You can get this pretty close, but I'm trying to get as close as I can. So Kelly is saying Japanese anemones, which are gorgeous. That would go really well with the hellebore, too. And then she suggested trees in different seasons. Um, not sure if that would work because of potential tiny detail, but you know, I think a, a, a pine branch would be really pretty with a pine cone to go with the acorns. Mm-hmm. So maybe each, each of these four has its own little blowout set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that I know, especially with this cherry, cause it just is, it's scream spring, spring it, season. It does. It does. So it's not sticking yeah. down. Yeah. And I I don't know. I mean, I would hang this in my house. I have quite a bit of pink in my house. Mm -hmm. So um, it just fits so well. And I would leave it up all year round. Yes, same. In fact, this one's coming home with me. (laughs) (laughs) I love this, how this one came out. This is probably Mm -hmm. my second favorite. My first favorite is still the first one I did, which I remember we did on a whim Mm -hmm. because I was having a hard time with the project I was supposed to be doing. And I was like, what if I did this instead? Where did this come from? Oh, up there. <laughs> <laughs> Talking and puzzling gets complicated. Multitasking. Okay, we're getting close, okay, guys. Connie, I love Connie's comment. She says, I don't care the subject. You choose, just keep doing these watercolors. <laughs> I don't know if that's the tone you said it, Connie, but, <laughs> but that's what I heard. I love it. I'm gonna place the branch piece before I do the flower, since it goes underneath. And that's kind of the important thing about when you're doing these, is just think about what would be under each piece, so. The layering. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Eucalyptus branch, that would be a really pretty one. That's from Kelly. We could get really fun with the textures on that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even maybe find a eucalyptus branch with pods or some sort of 
you know, flower type thing on them. Okay. Okay, if, if you guys aren't working along with this, I am guessing you're just chomping at the bit to get onto this project. It looks like so much fun. <laughs> Yay, okay, so we've got our first little layer done here, and now we're gonna go in and add just a little more detail. So we've got the sky, which we're going to put over here. And I like layering these little pieces on top of each other because you get this kind of interesting petal effect, like the flower is turned to the side. Mm -hmm. And we do that with our main petal as well. Okay, so now we've got these little bits. I guess we could do our riser pieces. Do whatever you like. <laughs> yeah, do the risers to show everyone Kay. how you do that. We're gonna do our risers. So for the risers, it's very simple. We're just gonna get them out. And these are the smaller size. So this is the quarter of an inch size. Um, we do have a half an inch size as well. I like these little ones because you can kind of put them on individual petals. And mm -hmm. then um, put two or three on. Put each. a few on. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I pack them in there. I'm just like, we're gonna get you to stick. There so we go. I'm, I'm doing five. And to get the little um, backing off, the tweezers are great for that. You just kind of pinch. I'm it telling off. you, these tweezers. They, I know they're great. They're probably one of them, in the top three of my favorite tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so we've got all of our. Risers on this first guy, and this one's gonna go like these, right over the top. And it's overlapping. And the great thing about the risers is that we can kind of pop them off if we need to. If we need to adjust, it's pretty easy. Great. Next one, here, you wanna put some risers sure. on this for me? Keep me busy here. <laughs> I used to put the, I'd put a riser on, take the little top part off, put a riser on, take it off. And now I just put them all on, take them all off, find it's a little faster. A little more efficient. I know that's a very hot tip, guys. I know there's. <laughs> <laughs> I see some of these in my future for Mother's Day. I love that. Oh yeah. This would be a gorgeous Mother's Day project. Thank yes. you. Well, I guess you're done with your Mother's Day gift for me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, it's not quite because your birthday is right around Mother's Day. True that. Well, you got one down. Yeah, one down. <laughs> so now we've got our three petals down, and you can see this one's like really quite streaky here. I love that. And I think yeah. it's lovely. And that's um, also the one that has the additional piece. Yes, and I intentionally skewed originally the little bits in the middle. What, do you know what they are on cherry? Uh, the I, bits, we'll call them the middle bits. Um, we're a little bit under this first petal, I but I just <laughs> shifted them over so you can actually put this piece down first without having to worry about running into it. So we're gonna put that round edge right along the round side. And there we go, it's like a little bent petal. Ow, don't stab yourself with these tweezers. They're very sharp. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna add all of our little details on, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of this, and then I want to show you how I did our center bits, or our stamen, mm -hmm. if they're a stamen. Yes. <laughs> this petal piece, it's kind of a two-prong, and we're gonna put it right over the top of this bud, so it creates three petals. Beautiful. And the color variation is really nice. Mm -hmm. And we've got another one of those mm -hmm. that we put up on the top. Oh, Kelly, she's coming up with more ideas. She said we could do a tropical flower series. Love that Mother's idea. Day. Yeah, and orchids, which could go right into that or into the tropical flower series. Thanks for your engagement mm -hmm. today, Kelly. I know. Some good ideas. Yes, great ideas. And this I can see here on um, this this particular flower ended up a little higher than it did in the illustration. So I might take some of my extra buds and fill in a little of this gap space if it feels right. 
From here, I would go ahead and just take my little teeny bud pieces, place them out according to how I did them, and then you can shift them around um, and fill in any gaps that you'd like. Uh, but let's go ahead and go over how to do these center pieces. So there's one, two, three, four, five pieces. Oh wait, yeah, five of them that have centers. Mm -hmm. And we're going to... But you've cut more. So there's five centers and two pieces for each center. Oh, right. Okay. Because the centers are so tiny. I really had to get a little creative on how we put these together. So we've got, I need to put these on something. I'm going to put them on here. Okay. Um, so we've got. I also like the layering with the dimension, the dimension mm -hmm. of the stacked paper. So how I'm going to organize these to start is I'm going to put the bigger ones. We have two repeats of each. So this one's the same as this one. If, um, yeah, up to the camera. This one is the same as this one, except for smaller. This one is the same as this one, and this one's smaller. And then this is the only one that is kind of its own unique thing. And that one's slightly more squished, <laughs> is how I tell the difference. That's the squished one. So that's the squished one. And then we've got our big sprawled one, our small sprawled one. I'm taking this off the sticky just so I can move them around a little bit better. <laughs> Connie says she loves the tropical series idea because she lives in Florida and Kelly says you opened the floodgates. Uh -huh. <laughs> Keep on coming. That's we like okay. the okay. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. And you guys can let me know if you're making these, do you find that these little tiny details interesting or do you find them a little bit too challenging? Uh, because that kind of feedback would really help me design these in the future for you guys. I'll tell you, I love them because the detail that you get is incredible. It's lovely, so but it's definitely challenging, I it find. Is. It's like, mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of thought, like kind of what I mentioned right now, you know. So we've got our two sprawled ones, those stack, and what we're going to do is just offset them so they cross. We've got two little X's and we're just going to offset them so they're in the little gaps. And we'll add a little glue there in between. Go. A little zoom in there. Yeah, I know, there it's so go. tiny. And then we've got the same thing with the small one. We'll add some glue in there, and this is the angled one, the crazy angled one. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, guys. And you can always go watch the replay and pause it if you need to. Yes, I'm just setting up my pieces. Okay, and then we've got our two squished ones. And the real trick with this is that you just want those two pieces to be offset. Mm -hmm. So the smaller one, the little one that goes right on top is gonna go in the gaps between the larger one that's underneath. So you can see each of these two pieces has turned into five little mm -hmm. centers. And we will need to add glue to these. So let's go ahead and put these on. And this Does one. Does it matter which one you do first? Which layer goes first? Yes. So you want to okay. do the bigger one first and then the small one on top. So we've got, there's a, a bigger piece and a small one to each. So here you can see that's one. That's one. I warned Matthew we're going to be working really tiny today. So that's one. And then our last one. There we go. You could almost have like two sets of tweezers, <laughs> kind of an Edward scissor. Yeah, feel. totally. Yes. Okay. So let's get started. We're going to do this one first. Let's start down here and we can see the split. It's kind of angled and that's so that it goes away from our little petal. I do wish these had ended up slightly darker, but you can fix that. that yes. Mm -hmm. No more. So I'm just tapping it in the glue and then oops, doing our second piece. Same thing, tapped it in the glue. And now I know where it goes. I'm just going to do it off in the center. Great. Next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've got the same kind of um, squished one, but smaller down here. So we'll do the same thing. Kelly says the dimension is amazing and it's the best kind of puzzle. Yeah, it definitely is. Puzzles. It is a puzzle. It's you have to look at it. Yes, 
you really have to look um, look at it carefully <laughs> as you work. Okay, and now we've got our big X one, which is gonna be here right in the center. I'm just gonna place the biggest piece down first. And then the smaller. Here's my efficiency, mom. Let's move the glue over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's my tip for the day. We put your glue on the side of your hand that you're using. Yes. And then our smaller one is gonna be up here. Okay, um, Connie says she loves the details and Karen is saying, what about adding watercolor metallic gold paint accents? You could and absolutely do that. That would be so beautiful, especially for these little centers. Mm -hmm. You could almost get out a little metallic gold pen and even dot each of the tips yeah. of the stamen with Or the kind of like I mentioned, if you want to add your detail with watercolor instead mm -hmm. of colored pencil, you could leave it on the paper before you, or after you've cut it, but before you pull it off mm -hmm. and add that extra paint in. Paint in some details, mm -hmm. over paint some gold, whatever mm -hmm. feels good. Oh, this is so pretty. Um, should I go ahead and add the tiny details or move on to colored pencil? What do you guys think? We've got some bud pieces left, but it's just kind of the same Let's thing. Let's do colored pencil, then we can come back and add the detail. Okay. So if you're adding any colored pencil, you can, like I said, do this before you pull it off. Um, add your decoration here on your paper, which is what I did in the past. Uh, but this time I actually just did it once I glued it because I didn't do quite as much this time. I just mm -hmm. added a little bit of shadow around the center, kind of around our bud. I liked to add, because I used a little more yellow in the last one, I like to add a little of this kind of pop of yellow on some of the petals. So it's really, you're using the color pencil to enhance some difference mm -hmm. in the layers. Yes. And just add a little shadow underneath. Like I said, the color pencil for this one is not 100% necessary, but I think it's pretty. It's also fun. And, you know, I don't know about everybody watching, but I love coloring, adult coloring. I actually have an app on my phone, which is... Yeah. When I'm listening to things that I need to pay attention to, I color. It's a great way to engage our our hands in an activity, I know. So that my brain of, thinks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would always pull out the color pencils. Color pencils were my favorite medium when I was in art school. Mm hmm Oh, I love that. Just adding that little pop of orange. Yeah, I think the orange is a really... Um, fun little kicker to these, because it's kind of unexpected. Yeah, there's something about when you're looking at color combinations, when you have that kind of, I, this I wouldn't necessarily call this contrasting, but there's enough difference between them that it adds, I, I'm gonna say juiciness. Mm -hmm. It is orange, so maybe that's why <laughs> <laughs> that word came to my mind. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, another tip that I've, I've said in the past with each one of these, when you're coloring 3D objects, um, something that I regularly practice in my own art is we don't wanna color all the way to the edge most of the time. We're going to kind of leave a little bit of a gap and that helps create an effect of what's called bounce light, or in this case, it would probably be um, the light coming out back through the petals. So this mm -hmm. edge is gonna remain mostly clear of color and we're kind of gonna keep our color in towards the center a little bit. So even if I'm doing it on one side, just kind of did this little triangle here, leaving the edges blank mm -hmm. and then came in the center with our yeah. pink. And and not coloring the whole thing, mm -mm. just adding little, little details. Just a little. It's almost like putting blush on the petals. Totally. That's a great way to explain it. Right? You wouldn't put blush all over your face. <laughs> no blush on my chin. Yes. I do <laughs> wish that I had done my centers a little darker. You can see in our original one here that the centers got were nice and dark. They were closer to our stem mm -hmm. color, and that's what they should be. So I should have gone over that with a, another wash of the brown, 
but alas, you can learn from my mistakes and it still looks lovely. So it's a great example of, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect um, because it's still gonna look really pretty. And I think that that would be a perfect time to bring out your gold pen yeah. and add that little gold touch. And you can see how mm -hmm. like cool and 3D this looks with those risers and all that depth. So Kelly says, I love this, painting and adding accents with colored pencil makes me feel really artistic. Totally, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's part of the fun, right? Like mm -hmm. this is supposed to be an art piece. Yeah. And I think that, that's why I pulled them out. Even though I didn't use very many of them, I'm like, ah, oh, I still want to use, still want to use it a little bit. Any excuse to be doing art at work. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, isn't that what we do every day? <laughs> yeah. And then you would finish that by adding all your little tiny buds. Yeah, and just add your tiny buds the same exact way I did everything. Just use your tweezers, mm -hmm. dip it in the glue, and place it down. Honestly, place it down first, and then, and then glue them into place. Mm -hmm. So you can really get them exactly where you want them. And yeah, I think that this is a, a lovely one to add to our collection. And I can't wait to continue making more. I'm glad you guys are enjoying them so much. Yeah. And um, if you're watching the replay, just go ahead and comment and let us know if you have any ideas of different flowers or branches or fruit or whatever that you think that we could add to this growing collection. Yeah. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. It's and a growing collection. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon we'll have a whole art show. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I love it. All Great. right. Well, thank you for coming today and trying something new. Yeah. Or, yeah. This was really fun and um, we look forward to doing it again. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.